Hi guys, welcome back to the Curl Factory. It's Raquel. Today's video is going to be a chit chat video about the Curly Girl Method and this book right here. I'm confused about this method so I went out and bought the book and I'm hoping to do at least maybe two or three videos just talking about the Curly Girl Method, my frustrations, my confusions and just sharing with you guys like what is going on and, and come with me on this journey of like going through this book and just sharing what's in the book and trying to figure it out. This video isn't about explaining what the Curly Girl Method is but really trying to understand what's going on. So before we get into this chit chat video, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media. I've been on my natural hair journey for about seven years and I've never understood the curly girl method. One of the reasons I don't follow it is because I don't truly understand it. I understand that it's about ingredients. I understand that it's about co-washing. But whenever I watch YouTube videos or whenever I'm reading up about the curly girl method, things don't always align. Somebody always says, I'm following the curly girl method, but I'm breaking the rules. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I'm like, what's the point? Because I don't really understand. So I went out and I bought this book and in South Africa, I bought it on takealot.com. And this is the curly girl, the handbook. This is a celebration of calls by Lorraine Massey and uh, Michelle Bender. And I went out to buy this book so that I could read it. If this is the book that the curly girl method is based on, then this book should tell me exactly what I should be doing. So in this video, it's not going to be very long. I started reading the book and, and I had certain expectations from the beginning. I wanted to open the book and chapter one, I wanted to know what products or what ingredients I should be avoiding. That's what I wanted. I didn't get that. And that's cool because Lorraine shares her story. She shares her cold story and how she started out, which was interesting. There's also cold confessions with other curly girls or curly women, I should say, sharing their difficulties, you know, growing up with curly and so forth so that was really nice but at the back of my mind I'm like when is this book going to really start for me something only really stood out in chapter 3 so I read chapter 1 and 2 and I was like okay in chapter 3 this is identifying your cold type and I was like okay so this is something that I really want to know about and I think I'm going to say this to you guys and I'm doing this video just to be honest with you. I did expect certain things from the book that it didn't deliver. So if you buy it and read it, read it with an open mind because it's not going to give you what you want. Chapter 1, Word 1. So chapter 3 is when the book came alive for me. And as I showed you guys, I did highlight some parts. And what I found interesting in chapter 3, it says curls are like snowflakes or fingerprints. No two are alike making it difficult to generalize about curly hair and that is so true i have different textures i have different patterns on my hair my siblings hair isn't like mine so it was just a nice refresher to know that everything is not the same later on in the same paragraph it says your hair really will evolve once you know how to care for it and style it and that's something that I believe and I like the fact that you said when you learn how to care for it because I'm such an advocate for healthy hair you've got to know how to care for your hair and then you've got to know how to style it in the same paragraph it goes on to say waves turn into spirals ringlets into corkscrews and undefined fractal afros into well hydrated shiny coils and if you're on your journey you'll see how your hair's changed i mean now that i've cut my hair my hair has so many spirals in it i mean i've seen my hair change i've seen my hair get better and better with every single year and i'm gonna say something might be a little bit controversial from my journey and my experience I found that only after about four years of being on my journey, three to four years, did I actually start loving my hair, enjoying my hair. And like, I was like, 
what five years into my journey before I put on my camera to do a YouTube channel because I found that those those first three to four years of just taking care of my hair understanding my hair it, it, it wasn't immediate and I only fell in love with my hair three to four years into my journey so if you are on your journey and you're in your first second and third year of being natural take it easy don't be hard on yourself your hair is changing your hair is going to start showing you what it likes what it loves and then something else in the book that it says it says curls are like a box of chocolates you never know which type you're going to get and then in chapter three she kind of names the different curl types and then she shows you pictures and she shows you what type of curl that is and then you turn over and it shows you other calls so you can see like a celebrity you can see someone else and you can see what the call type is called and it goes on and all i could keep thinking about is when am i getting to my call type and then finally we got two calls that i could identify myself that you know this is what i basically have and so I'm just going to share with you from the book a description of what would be similar to my type of hair. And these are fractal or zigzag curls. And it says curls that might be described as twizzles, micro spirals, or fractal corkscrews. It also says an almost step-like pattern to your hair. It may not look zigzag when you look at your hair as a whole. But when you take a closer look and you look at every single individual curl, you'll see it. It says hair that is re relentlessly dry. My hair's not relentlessly dry, but I kind of understand um, where they're coming from or where she's coming from. It says hair that's hypersensitive to rough handling. My hair hates being handled rough. Curls that don't change with the season. Mine don't change at all. And then it says a receding hairline from having your hair pulled back to tight, relaxed or weighed down by a, a weave. All curly curls are prone to this but fractal and zigzag curls are more than others or more than most and that's the reason why if you have my type of hair and I also have some type 4 um, curls I have 3B, C and 4A hair you find that's the, the, the hairline or the edges drama you know people losing their edges losing their baby hair we've got to be so gentle with our hair and last it says a spring factor of 9 to 16 inches now I'm not sure how long my hair really is at the moment because this is a fresh cut but when my hair was waist length, that's when you see my hair sitting about here in most videos. A whole lot of shrinkage, about 16 inches or more of shrinkage was something that I would get. So this is basically the category that I would fall into. I'm going to end this video with chapter 4. And chapter 4, the heading is the curly girl method. And again, I was like, oh, I had to get to chapter 4 to finally get a heading that says the curly girl method the reason why I bought the book to find out what is the curly girl method so you do have to get through um, it a bit and when I got to this chapter I was like what's going on so in the book page 36 and page 37 outline the curly girl method and it's, this is what it looks like so these two pages outline the curly girl method and all it has is cleansing conditioning scrunching and styling and for somebody who loves to deep condition, I was like, where's the deep conditioning? And this was another thing that confused me about the Curly Girl Method was that I know people deep condition, people talk about a final wash, there's all these words that I've heard about, but in the book, chapter four, those words haven't come out yet. And I was like, I'm even more confused, but I'm gonna carry on reading. And then when I turn the page, it went straight into how to use the four steps which are cleansing conditioning scrunching and styling for the hair types that were shown earlier and again i was like where's the deep conditioning where's the final wash where is all of this now remember guys i'm just talking to you from the beginning of the book up to chapter four and i'm just sharing my thoughts as i'm reading the book if later on in the book it gives that information we will get there together but at this point and having some knowledge of the curly girl method it's not really giving me what i want so let's quickly look at the cleansing part according to the book it says there are two parts to the cleansing routine for all curls cleansing your scalp and hair and then conditioning your hair 
How often you cleanse and condition depends on your hair and where you are in the process. If you're weaning yourself off shampoo, you may want to stay on your usual cleansing schedule, just replacing your regular shampoo with a sulfate-free product or botanical conditioner. And I was like, ding, 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 sulfate-free. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Then it goes on to say, once your hair becomes more hydrated and healthy, you'll probably cleanse less often and just wet your hair and go right into the conditioning step of your curl type. You know guys, and then it talks about conditioning your hair, but the conditioning process is just the normal rinse out conditioner and it says when you rinse it out, just leave a little bit in. I know I might be leaving you guys hanging for a little bit, but I am going to end this video here with cleansing, conditioning, scrunching and styling. And the reason I'm going to leave this video here is because in the next video, I'm then going to talk about cleansing, conditioning, scrunching and styling for my type of hair. Just the four steps. And we're going to start on chapter five as well and see what actually is happening. So for, so. So, so far in today's video, we just looked at chapter 3 and a little bit of chapter 4. The stuff I'm not really happy about in, in the book, stuff that I'm still not getting from the book. And I keep saying four steps, cleansing, conditioning, scrunching and styling. And I will in the next video go through them just a little bit more. That's it guys. Thanks for joining me on this chit chat video concerning this book, um, which is the Curly Girl Handbook. Um, we're going to get into it a little bit more and I'm just going to share my thoughts as well. But drop your comments down below. Join me on this journey and I will see you again. Take care.